Lots of people say there's no way that two of every known species in the world could fit onto Noah's Ark. You know what? We agree. But the truth of the matter is that the Bible doesn't claim that's what happened. So if we really want to get to the truth of it, we're going to need to see what the Bible really says about all this and then ask three questions. How many animals are we really talking about? How big were they? And how big was the Ark? We answer those, we're closer to understanding the truth. Make sense? Good. So how many animals are we really talking about here? Well, let's jump back to move forward, shall we? Let's take a peek at day five of creation week and do a plain reading of Genesis 1 verse 21. And God created great whales and every living creature that moveth, which the waters brought forth abundantly after their kind, and every winged fowl after his kind. Jump ahead to Genesis 1 25, day six, the same day man and woman were created, and here's what we get. And God made the beast of the earth after his kind, the cattle after their kind, and everything that creepeth upon the earth after his kind. So there you have a very clear account of the land and sea creatures created by God according to their kinds. Now, take a look at the phrase, according to their kind. What does it mean? Is it the same as species? I don't think so. It's possible that it's closer to what we call families in the typical biology class today, with some exceptions. Keep in mind that species is a man-made definition anyway. Confused? Huh? Let me explain. Let's take the dog kind, for example. We'll call the female dog taken on the ark Bingo, because that's the name of my first dog. Okay, from Bingo and her mate, you can get the various species of coyote, wolf, and even domestic dogs, like the border collie, great dane, poodle, and so on. You get it? The different species we have now could have easily been generated after the flood from the information already present within the parent kind. So kind isn't the same as species at all. And a plain reading of the Bible teaches that Noah only had to take the representatives of the different kinds of land-dwelling, air-breathing animals. You don't believe me? Take a look for yourself. Genesis 6.20 Of the birds after their kind, of animals after their kind, and of every creeping thing of the earth after its kind. Two of every kind will come to you to keep them alive. That's as clear as it gets, folks. Simple instructions of what to take and what not to take. And in case we need further understanding, Understanding of what God meant, he clarifies by telling us what died outside the ark. Genesis 7:22, and in whose nostrils was the breath of the spirit of life, all that was on the dry land died. Okay, so he's not talking about any sea creatures being on the ark. Not the tiniest seahorse or the largest whale. Uh, because the last time we checked, they weren't swimming around on dry land. He's also not talking about plant life or single-celled organisms or bacteria. No, only things that have the breath of life in its nostrils and are on dry land. That's great, you say. But how many original kinds of land-dwelling, air-breathing creatures are on the ark? Well, to be quite honest, we weren't there, and I don't have the time for each and every detail. But one leading ark researcher did a whole bunch of calculations and was very generous with the numbers he used. He selected the genus level and found that there are less than 8,000 kinds, or about 16,000 individual animals. So let's just round up to say 30,000 and then call it even. It'll make the math easier anyway. Could 30,000 animals fit on the ark described in Genesis? That's a good question. Glad you asked. To answer it, we have to take a look at two more things. The size of the average animal and the size of the ark. Makes sense? Of course it does. Moving on. We can't list every animal, but we've got things from the various bird kinds to the elephant kind, from the various dinosaur kinds to the smallest mammal kinds, and so on and so on and so on. So, you take all the young adult animals, because nothing says the animals had to be the oldest and biggest, and you look at all the various sizes we know of today, even from the fossil record, and you do some calculating, you come to the conclusion that the average size of the land animal is actually smaller than a sheep. But let's just use a sheep as the average size for the sake of argument. So now we've got the size of the average animal, a sheep, and we have the maximum number of sheep, 30,000. So are we going to need a bigger boat? Well, let's see how big it really was and if 30,000 sheep could fit on it. Back to the Bible. Genesis 6.15. The length of the ark shall be 300 cubits, its width 50 cubits, and its height 30 cubits. Genesis 6.16. You shall make a window for the ark, and you shall finish it to a cubit from above, and set the door of the ark in its side. You shall make it with lower, second, and third decks. Using what's known as the small cubit, that makes the ark approximately 450 feet long, 75 feet wide, and about 45 feet high, with three decks, a door, and a window. So this ain't no canoe or a bathtub boat with giraffe heads poking out of it. This is a huge, seaworthy vessel. The total available floor space on the ark would have been over 100,000 square feet. The total cubic volume would have been 1,500,000. 18,000 cubic feet, which is about the capacity of 522 railroad stock cars. So we're getting down to the nitty gritty here, folks. How many sheep can fit into 522 stock cars? Well, just so happens I know the answer. The average double deck railroad stock car can fit about 240 sheep. Now that's a lot of wool. So 522 stock cars holding 240 sheep sized animals each gives us the hefty total of 125,280 sheep sized creatures that could have fit onto the ark. Remember, we only needed to fit 30,000 on it, and 30,000 is almost two times the already generous estimate of animals necessary necessary to represent all the species we see today. So it's easy to see that with more realistic numbers there was plenty of room for cages, food, and even fresh water for the duration of the year-long stay that these animals had to be on the ark. And you know what? Ark researchers have studied this too, and I'll let you look that up. So there you have it. Simple reading of scripture, simple math, basic science. This fallible claim against the Bible is debunked. Hmm. So it turns out that 
wacky Bible story about Noah and them their animals is more reasonable and more reliable than the atheist explanation of music, language, and morality. Dude, he is getting so far up my nose. I know. I, I don't know. care what you have to do, just put an end to it. Hey Todd, but how do I find him? Give him Darwin, he doesn't have it yet. Go! What did you give him? I gave him what had Darwin wrought. It teaches how Charles Darwin influenced eugenics, Nazi Germany, Planned Parenthood. I'm coming! With the axe! Oh, why?